You're watching Como News. And right now at 5 o'clock, we are following breaking news out of Canada. Officials there just confirmed two cases of the Omicron variant of COVID-19. They've been found in the province of Ontario, and those infections were in people who had recently been in Nigeria. Contact tracing is now being done right now to find out other positive cases. Those people are in isolation tonight. We'll have more on that variant coming up in just a few minutes from now. We are on flood watch tonight as another round of heavy rain moves into western Washington, hitting areas that are still dealing with the impacts of light last week's devastating floods. In Sumas tonight, city leaders strongly recommend that people evacuate as soon as possible. They're also monitoring the Nooksack River, which is still rising tonight. And this is video out of Bellingham, where some roads are completely covered with water, and water is starting to reach some homes and businesses there. These areas were hit by those historic floods nearly two weeks ago. And with all of this saturated soil, the risk of landslides has gone up. The State Patrol tweeted this picture of a landslide. This is on northbound Interstate 5 near Bellingham. It is partially blocking that road. State Patrol says the right lane will be closed overnight. We have crews tracking the impact of this next round of flooding. Abby's going to tell us what's to come. Nick Popham is in Bellingham tonight. But first, we go to Como's Mo Hyder live in Sumas with a look at the conditions there. Here we go again, Mo. Yeah, that's right, Steve. Well, I just spoke to the mayor of Sumas. He did say the majority of the city has evacuated, and you can certainly see why. Just for example, this neighborhood that I'm standing in, roads in this area just completely flooded, and this makes it especially difficult for homes like this one right behind me that are sitting lower. As the Nooksack River rises, so do concerns for many residents in Everson. And it's kind of scary. Yeah, you know, I... I just kind of not knowing what to do. April Young just moved here four weeks ago and evacuated when the area flooded earlier. I've been dealing with flood insurance. Um, it's been emotional. Uh, I lost two thirds of my possessions in my garage. A couple of days ago, she had to evacuate again. It's, it's very frustrating um, and it's emotional. I won't lie. I'm not going to cry on camera, but it's 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 upsetting. I, my son came from Idaho to spend Thanksgiving with me, and he ended up having to leave on Thanksgiving because it got so bad. Here in Sumas, roads covered in water and homes flooded as the community is still cleaning up from the damage earlier. People are just devastated. We, I've been on talking to people saying, here comes round two, and you know they're already down and, and discouraged. So it's just hard. It's uh, People are definitely being affected by the second round. Lizette Custer's home sits high up, but she still wasn't safe from any problems. It was like a river going in front of our house and from the um, southwest. And so our house was like an island and our basement flooded at about four feet of water. And with the community going through this again, she's concerned about its future. We're just really hoping that people come back and rebuild because there's a lot of damage. Now also the National Guard is here helping with road closures and also delivering sandbags to anyone that may need them. And also in Linden at the fairgrounds, Red Cross has an evacuation center set up as well. Live from Sumas, Mo Hyder, Como News. Got a feel for all those folks in Sumas. Mo, thank you. And right now, several major roads in Bellingham are closed because of flooding. The water has also reached some homes and businesses in that area. Como's Nick Popham live in Bellingham tonight with a look at the conditions that drivers are dealing with. A lot of water up there as well, Nick. Yeah, that's right, Steve. According to the National Weather Service, there had been uh, just less than 12 inches of uh, rain in the month of November, and they're expecting that to continue to happen as rain continues to fall from the sky. Here on Iowa Street, a business behind me here, you can actually see a pile of carpeting behind me at this business. That's because that's the carpeting that was removed from the last round of storms that we had uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And one of the workers here who I was talking with earlier was saying, wow, here we go again, because as you can see I'm standing in floodwaters here on Iowa Street and the water continues to creep closer and closer to this building. The hope is that it stops and starts to recede sometime soon uh, because of the flooding that's happening around Bellingham. But it's not just here, it's throughout the city. One resident I was speaking to said it was happening on some of the major thoroughfares that were uh, just about a mile or so away from where we're standing. It's caused uh, off-ramps to be closed going into town and many people to have to try to find alternate 
routes around the city. It stalled some cars for folks who've tried to brave going through the water, which is obviously something we don't recommend. Uh, but it continues to plague so many people who were just thankful that the round of storms two weeks ago had ended. But now they have to deal with this once again. We'll continue to follow this and have a report for everyone tonight at 11 and at 6. But for now, live in Bellingham, Nick Popham, Como News. Nick, thank you. And in Mount Vernon tonight, city leaders tell us they have put up that flood wall to protect the city's downtown area. The National Weather Service says the Skagit River there is expected to reach 30 feet tomorrow afternoon. That's a moderate flood stage. But the river is expected to reach a minor flood stage in concrete at around 10 o'clock tonight. Officials are preaching caution because many of these areas are still recovering from those devastating floods earlier this month. It's like a one-two punch here, Abby. Another round of flooding after all these communities dealt with this just two weeks ago. I know, it's really tough. And you know what? The rain hasn't been as intense as what we were even expecting for this weekend event alone. But because we're still dealing with isolated to scattered rain in the forecast tonight, tomorrow, with a few more rounds of rain later on this week, we still have the landslide risk and we'll still have to be monitoring our local rivers too. Those levels are rising tonight. Uh, some flooding through tomorrow. Again, and less flooding and less severe flooding than we were earlier expecting for this event. For the most part, minor to moderate floods, a possibility for many of our local rivers. Now, you can see rain no longer as extensive or heavy as what we've seen at earlier points in the weekend. But I want to focus up in Whatcom County, Everson right now, Clearbrook, all the way through Sumas, Peaceful Valley, Linden. You're still seeing some light showers, and it's up north where we're expecting more localized street flooding, small stream flooding, in addition to the river flooding that we have in the lime green here, flood warnings in effect. That means flooding is happening now or it's imminent. This applies to the Nooksack, the South Fork Nooksack, the Skagit Bogachil, and the Skokomish. More flood alerts to let you know about. I'll have that and your future cast right around the corner, Steve. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Abby, thank you. And officials remind you not to drive through water on roads. That is, even if there is not a road closed sign in place, roads will be monitored and will be closed as soon as possible if necessary. Skagit County says crews had to rescue several drivers during the last round of flooding early last week. Stay with Cole News over the coming hours and days as we work to keep you and your loved ones safe during this next storm. Be sure to download the Como News weather app to check the radar and the latest conditions. You can also find updates on comodews.com and also here on the air. We look ahead to tomorrow now. Restrictions on travel to the U.S. from several countries in southern Africa will go into effect, spurred by the concerning Omicron variant. Today, we learned that 61 passengers arrived in the Netherlands from South Africa tested positive for COVID-19. 13 of those were the Omicron variant. Dr. Anthony Fauci says it's only a matter of time before that variant is spotted in the U.S. The question is, will we be prepared for it? Well, it has a bunch of mutations, a disturbingly large number of mutations in the spike protein, which is the business end of the virus. Some American travelers who arrived from South African countries today were relieved when they made it home ahead of that travel ban. It was scary. Uh, you know, it's suddenly like we started hearing about the, this new variant, uh, like I think about Thursday. And then we woke up on Friday, there's like all these new restrictions. It looked much more serious. So we were like, we were concerned uh, if we were going to be able to come back home. Health experts say more research is needed to see how contagious this strain is and how effective the vaccines are. Developing now, a man is dead tonight after being shot in Everett. Just before 8.30 last night, police near California Street and Rockefeller Avenue heard gunfire at that scene. They found a man in his late 40s who had been shot and tried to save him. He was rushed to the hospital, and that's where we're told he later died. Police dogs were called in to try to find the shooter, but so far no arrests have been made there. Coming up, former President Trump's former fixer Michael Cohen speaking out fresh from a three-year prison sentence. Why he says there is enough evidence to indict Trump and a former cop killed during an attempted armed burglary. What the man was doing when he was killed. Those stories and much more on our weather situation when we come right back.